What's up, YouTube? All right, I'm doing a video today on my latest project. This is my 300 gallon acrylic. I just got this tank. Um, actually, I shouldn't say just got this tank. I got it a few months ago, but I've been holding off on doing the project. Now I got, I'm making time actually, I don't have time, but I'm making time to, uh, to get this tank done. I'm gonna just do a overview video today and go over everything I'm doing. I still have a lot of work. This is a used tank. I caught a great deal on it. Um, I have it down on its back so you can see the painted background. Um, uh, right now I'm just cleaning up all the scratches and buffing it out. You can see it's in some pretty rough shape here. It's eight feet long, 24 deep, and 30 tall. You can see I've already started doing uh, clean it up, but you can see the acrylic and here's some stuff that I've already cleaned up. It's glass clear. I mean, it's, it's drastic. So anyways, I'm going to go over first uh, substrate. I was going to use pond sand, but on this setup, I'm going to try and go with using no buffers. So just throwing in safe and call it a day. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to, right now I have an RO set up for my other tanks that runs into my 44 gallon bucket, which then I pump to my tanks. I was gonna do a large 275 gallon um, IBC tote, but I decided since there's, if you look here, there's little, ports here or holes I should say drilled it fits the tubing the quarter inch diameter tubing perfect so I'm thinking I just might do a drip system which is basically what you call an auto top off I'm not sure whether I'm going to do it into the into the tank itself or into the sump which I'll get to in a minute so start out with substrate oh by the way this tank this stand uh, it's just a custom-built stand. I'm gonna put doors on it once I get everything in um, Obviously, I got to finish up the uh, stain, but this was actually reversed. This was the back of the tank and I cut it out and uh, I'm gonna put like I said, I'm gonna put some doors on just two large swinging doors uh, Substrate I decided to use Aragonite sand from Carib Sea So there's four boxes 30 pounds so there's 120 there and then I'm gonna use the African cichlid mix these are 20 pound bags and there's five of them so 100 pounds there so 220 pounds of sand overall I'm not sure if I might use all of it I got to see it in the tank uh, just see how it looks but that's the substrate I'm going with that should more than plenty buffer the tank um, as far as decorations go, I'm gonna keep it simple. This is some um, coral base rock. I'll look at the shade of the box here. This is from Nature's Ocean. And uh, it's 40 pounds. I got two boxes of it. I've already soaked it, cleaned it, um, removed any algae. I did use a couple pieces on a planted tank, or excuse me, an old cichlid tank that I had in my um, office so you can see there was a little bit of algae growth on there um, I like I said I just soaked it it's drying out now but th that's gonna be the rocks that I'm gonna use for decorations all right this is calcium carbonate so this should help buffer the water as well in my other tank that I used it it kept it at 7.8 without even doing anything so that would be fine all right as far as filtration goes I'm going to go with a custom dual sump system. So I'm going to use an eShops WD300CS. I'm not using the plastic bio balls. They're junk. They're not very good for, um, well, they're only good for aerobic bacteria, but they do not build up any anaerobic. Doesn't matter how how long they've been in the system, just plastic does not harbor aerobic bacteria at all. Excuse me, anaerobic bacteria at all. 
So I'm most likely, I just ordered some more Biohome Ultimate. So more than like, I'm testing out the different ones. I think Ultimate, actually, excuse me, I ordered Maxi. Ultimate is what I used in my canisters, but I'm gonna try Maxi and see how that goes. It looks like it's a one by three inch piece. It should fit perfect. I just gotta see how much volume it's gonna take. All right, so that's that. And then I got a Trigger Emerald 39. I picked this up from a friend, really cheap. It was brand new, he ran it for a month. And then, uh, actually it's the same guy that hooked me up with the tank. He ran it on this tank. And uh, yeah, he just, he wanted to get out of the hobby. So I got both of them from, from him, really cheap. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm running, as you can see, there's two, two inlets here. These are one inch. And the same here, you can do two, or you can use an additional, there's another adapter plate to run a third. So you can run three one inch through this 39. This is a 40 gallon sump. This uh, is a 36 gallon sump. So total is 76 gallons, which for 300 gallon is gonna be more than enough. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this set up just like this, three filter socks. This area is gonna be filled with uh, pumice. I'm running uh, bio, the bio plates, I should say, or bio brick from Brightwell here in the plate, just like that. This is a lower flow area because the water comes through here and then has to rise up. So it'll be nice and high. It, shouldn't have, it should lower the flow a lot. Inside this section here, I'm gonna put some PO4 cubes. Again, all these are Brightwell Aquatics one of my favorite suppliers. So that's gonna go in here on this little plate. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. So down there. And then to get all the clean water back into the tank, I am going to run Sun Sun JDP 10,000s. They're 100 watt return pumps. I'm gonna use them only at 40 watts. So I'm trying to achieve, I'm trying to achieve uh, at least 3,000 gallons of flow through the tank. The I'll get to the piping in a minute, but um, with the power at 40 watts, it should return 7,500 liters, which is about 1,980 gallons per hour. So times two, I'm going to be almost 4,000 gallons per hour on the return at 40 watts each. Instead of, you know, obviously at 100, it'll run almost 3,000 gallons per hour for each pump. So I decided to go with a bigger one and just run it at a lower wattage and should work out. All right, as far as plumbing goes, this was previously a tank before, before the guy I got it from. He got it from a fishery. So it was a sam or a hatchery, excuse me, a salmon hatchery. They had return holes and drain holes all over the tank. You can see there's a big two inch that they had two of these tanks, or excuse me, three of these tanks connected. So the first thing I had to do was figure out how I'm going to filter it or how I'm going to get it to drain. I uh, debated doing a custom uh, overflow box, internal overflow box. I didn't really like that idea. Um, so what I decided to do was just do my own custom layout and I'll show you what I'm doing. So I went out, I got acrylic pieces, I beveled them down. I'm going to put one right there to plug that guy. I got another one here. You can see I've already drilled the, or uh, laid out the hole. I'm putting another one to cover those two. You can see that like that. I put the 45 degree bevel so when I'm cleaning the tank, it doesn't get, you know, it's not sharp and it's not scratching me. And the last thing is I'm going to put this big boy up like that and plug this thing. So like I said, this is the back of the tank. So this will be towards the back. It shouldn't be that noticeable. Um, I, well, it's gonna be noticeable, but it shouldn't be that bad as to the eye. All right, so those pieces are gonna be like that. And then here, the guy I got it from, he had already drilled out a three inch hole for a two inch bulkhead. That's gonna work out perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run dual 
two inch bulkheads on either side. So one there and one there, completely level. And then I've, I'm gonna run a Durso system. So if you could think about it, this is, this is the tank on its back. So it's gonna be draining like this with the bulkhead. This will be up like this. I'm gonna drill slots in the 45 there so I don't have too much noise and I don't limit the flow, but it's gonna be about somewhere right here. So if you can picture it, just like that, somewhere like that. Uh, on either side, like I said, I'm gonna run a Durso. So there's gonna be a hole right where, right in the middle there for airflow. So I don't, I could break the siphon. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do two two inch returns. That should be with a gravity fed. It should be at least 2000 an hour, or well, I should say 1800 gallons per hour just on gravity fed. So just with this on, on a gravity drain, on either side, I'll be at 3,600 gallons per hour. Returns, I'm gonna, right where these holes are right here, I'm gonna do returns in the middle, okay, with a 90. That's gonna be like that on either side. I'll probably actually put them out to 45s like that. But all of these fittings, let me show you, are, uh, are street fittings, so they just slide in here and I could take them out for cleaning and such, and they're not permanent, which I like. All right, oh, one thing I did not mention is on the, as a fail safe, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna drill a two inch pipe and connect these sumps at the returns. And I'm gonna use a uni seal. I, I have bulkheads, but I decided because of the clearance, I'm gonna go with the uni seals. So I'm gonna put the uni seals in and a two inch pipe and that way it'll level out the, uh, well one, I want it connected because in case it floods or one pump goes out, I'll be able to have the other pump to sustain the, the tank until I could catch it and then repair it. So these are gonna get connected using uni seals. Put that back and then I'm gonna use this corrugated pond tubing for my returns from the pumps up to my 90 degrees. All right, and lighting, my go-to. Phoenix planted 24-7. This is, I, use, I have these on every single one of my tanks. I won't use anything else. I've tried a bunch of other lights. Hands down, in my opinion, the best, best lights ever. So they're a little pricey, but they're they're amazing so this is the new um color control but it's got the older ones which i don't have it out here the older ones have the infrared sensor off of a little wire this one's got it built into the end cap so it's nice and clean so i'm gonna run dual 48 inch planted 24 7 phoenix lights they are led and heat, I'm using Phoenix Titanium 500 watt. It's gonna be summer here soon. I probably won't even have this in the sumps. Um, but in addition, I have a bunch of Aquion Pro 300 watt, 300 watt heaters. And what I just, just an off topic story here is I had one unit, which was here, fail on me. And then another, an additional unit that was in my pond that would not shut off. So it ran 24 seven. I constantly had to unplug it and put it back in. Um, so what I did was I went and replaced it. I have inside my 120 gallon, I have another Phoenix 500 watt. Um, so I contacted Aquion. Their, their customer service was amazing. I sent them the uh, receipts and the, uh, you know, some pictures of the, of the units. I told them I had two that failed. 
About a week later, I get four 300 watt pros in the mail. They don't, they said, don't worry about returning this. Here you go. Let me know how it goes. I, I was astonished. Just amazing customer service. Um, for that, I'm going to continue to use them. I do prefer a titanium heater. I do not like using the jacket. So I just purchased some additional clips that'll go right onto the tube. So I take this off and I just run the tube exposed. It works perfect. It's less cleaning, you know, maintenance, and uh, it actually will heat better. So um, yeah, so that's the heat. I'm going to, now this is something I haven't tried, but I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna try it. It's just something I want it organized. I'm a neat freak, so. Um, this is actually a DJ power control. It's got rocker switches here, but what's cool about it is you can plug everything in and control it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this underneath like so, like that. And I'll have everything plugged into it and I'll be able to easily turn everything off with the flick of a switch. I'm gonna label everything. Um, but that way it'll be nice and clean. Um, like I said, I'm gonna finish up this tank. Um, right now I gotta finish buffing everything out. I, what I did was I did a wet sand first. So I did a thousand and then 2000 and then I buffed it out. I, I got a mother's power cone and I'm using Novus, their scratch remover system, which works amazingly well. You can see, so this is what the tank looked like. That's before and this is after. I mean, it's, it's crystal clear. You can see looking down at this way. You can see it crystal clear. Excuse my garage. Yeah, by the way, this is a tank garage. Or a garage tank, excuse me. My wife did not want this big monster inside the uh, house just in case there was a flood or anything. She just didn't want it. So I have a three car garage and now it's turning into my fish room. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some, some more videos that are gonna show the progress of the tank. Um, I should have this up and running, I want to say by May. So that's my goal. I want to get it running before summer. And yeah, so thanks for watching. I'm sorry if this is a lengthy video, but there's a lot, lot to go over. And uh, go ahead and if you, haven't, if you haven't subscribed to me, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button and please comment below. I like to hear all the comments. So um, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.